What's going on, NBA fanatics? This is your friendly neighborhood, Memphis Grizzly Homer, Memphis X, and I talk hoops. Well, happy 4th of July, everybody, but the real deal starts tomorrow. NBA Summer League kicks off with the Memphis Grizzlies in Utah, and we're going to preview it. But first, every hero needs their theme music. Y'all, the NBA Summer League is my annual reminder every year, my favorite part of the season, that reminds me of how good real NBA basketball is. It doesn't matter how close these guys are to the NBA and even the fact that some of them are real NBA players. Once you get to watching the NBA Summer League, you realize just how good the NBA really is. But that doesn't stop you from fiending for NBA basketball in July when you've been gone, when it's been gone for so long, for a couple of months, and you're wanting to see any inkling of NBA basketball. So, I am happy that the Grizzlies start tomorrow in Utah. And I'm just going to share a few things that I'm looking for in the games tomorrow. Uh, Was it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, before they head out to Las Vegas and play in the real Summer League? So, does that make this Summer League preseason? Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, one of the best things to look for is improvement in the players that you had on your team the year before. And that is the primary focus of this summer league for me and most real Grizzlies fans. And the number one player that we're hoping to see improve is Mr. Zaire Williams. Now Zaire had a surprisingly good rookie season for the Grizzlies last year. And I say surprisingly good because expectations for him were low coming off of a very, very poor college freshman season at Stanford University. So there weren't many expectations. And then to add to that, he started the season off so poorly. He was actually during his first stint in the regular season one of, one of, if not the worst rotation player in the NBA. No cap. He was terrible. Wasn't making no shots. Wasn't rotating right on defense. Everything was pretty, pretty bad. But Coach Taylor Jenkins kept putting him out there. And then he suffered an injury uh, early in the season and had to sit out a few games. And it's like when he came back, he was a different player. I I don't know what happened. I don't know what the Grizzlies did while he was out. I don't know what kind of transformation he went through. But it was like he was a different player. He was more attentive on defense. He was actually making shots afterwards. And he had a pretty good end of the season, especially after the All-Star break. Now, he was a very productive player player after the all-star break I mean I posted his stats before in other places and I'm gonna put them up right now and you will see how good he was after the all-star break so what is the mission for summer league for Zaire Williams of course the Grizzlies have openly said that they're gonna put him on ball like they did Desmond Bain last year and I don't think he's gonna actually have the same role Desmond Bain had where Desmond Bain was basically playing point guard in summer league I think he's just going to get more on-ball reps. I just don't see him as the type of player that's going to be able to have those point guard reps. But, man, what do I know? I wouldn't – if you guys remember Desmond Bain's start of his rookie season, Desmond Bain could barely dribble up the court. He was scared to actually dribble up the court against NBA pressure defense early in his rookie season. That's just so how far he's come along – in the NBA in one 
year. So my expectations for Zaire aren't as high as everybody else, but I just want to see him be able to functionally take other defenders off the dribble, you know, live dribble, take them off the dribble, dribble, pass and shoot. And, you know, be able to make plays for himself and others. He's so long at a, he's effectively six foot 10 with a six foot 11 Stand, you know, six foot eleven wingspan, so he can get his shot off. He has a high release, so I want him to be able to get his shot off in traffic, especially in the paint in the mid range, and be able to generate shot attempts. That is that is the big thing to me. Whether he's making them or not, at a fantastic rate, it's not really a big deal to me during this summer league. But the fact that he can actually generate the shot attempts would be big to see. Now. The Grizzlies have a handful of rookies, and I really do mean a handful because they have five key rookies that we're going to be paying attention to, and that's a lot. We got two, three that are going to be on regular contracts and two that are going to be on two ways. That's already settled, and they're going to probably make, hopefully make at least one of them will make a big impact in the summer league. So first, we have the 19th pick in the draft, Mr. Jake LaRavia. Um, he's been getting comps from everything from, you know, Kyle Anderson, um, Tyler Hero, Luke Walden. I don't know exactly what kind of player he's going to be. He is one of those combo forwards in the that in college played a more interior game that's going to have to bring his game out to the exterior to the you know he's going to have to become a more perimeter oriented player than he was in college and one of the things that I heard his college coach say was that until last year he was basically a post player you know an interior player in college his first two years at Indiana State he was basically a post player and he finally got on the perimeter so that's probably why his three three point field goal attempts are so low as far as somebody who shoots like he does because if you watch his highlights um, and watch the makes from three-point, he is some of the purest makes that you will ever see from a three-point shooter, and it is wonderful to watch. His makes are just like straight bottom uh, when he makes them. So that is encouraging. So what do I hope to see from him? I want to see him have the functional athleticism to stay in front of perimeter players in the NBA. That's it. My expectations are not high. I don't have these grandiose expectations that we're going to see somebody blossom into a star in the NBA. I mean, in the NBA Summer League, I just want to see them look functional. And this is the little things that you want to see from your NBA rookies. This is Memphis X with I Talk Hoops. While you're here, Subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications so you will be alerted to all the new videos I have coming up during this NBA offseason. We have a goal on this channel to get to 1,000 subscribers before the new season starts, and I'm going to need your help to get there. Thank you. Now, at pick 23, the Grizzlies took David Roddy from Colorado State, of course, and he is a six foot six, 255-pound combo forward. Uh, And he is going to be very interesting to watch because he is one of those guys that either is going to be freaking fantastic in the NBA or it's going to be a real big dud. I don't think he's going to be one of those guys that kind of just fits in in the NBA and becomes like this role player that, you know, that's going to be able to stick around. He might. He might become the P.J. Tucker type. I don't know. But. His bag, his game is just so good off the dribble. His offensive game is so good that I have visions of him becoming a good six-man eventually in the NBA. Somebody that you can put in, that he can play with. He can play virtually any position outside of point guard. And he's going to be able to score and be a mismatch. It's going to be hard for smaller guys to combat on the perimeter, and it's going to be hard for bigger guys to combat on the perimeter because of his size and compactness. He is going to be a hard player to deal with if his skills translate to the NBA. Vince Williams, 
I really, really do like, and I think he's going to be the guy that earns a regular contract before the season's out. I hope the Grizzlies save enough of that mid-level exception to be able to give him a contract. I know they're going to give part of it to um, Kennedy Chandler, who we're going to talk about next, but I hope they save a little bit for Vince Williams because I think he's going to earn that before the end of this season. And the thing about Vince Williams, he's a lefty, and he has a real nice step-back jumper. And I really, really want to see that translate into an effective shot where it's going in at the same rate it was in college because a lot of his shots were NBA range. And he looks really, really good in a good 3 and D role. He has a 7-foot wingspan at 6-foot 5-ish. You know, he's 6-foot 5-ish with a 7-foot wingspan. He's not the quickest or most, most athletic, which is why he lasted as far as he did in the draft. But... He's very smart, very quick as far as hand speed goes, and he, he makes a lot of things happen with the ball in the lane. So hopefully he can become a good 3 and D prospect where he can sit out and make three-point shots, attack closeouts, you know, either by driving and kicking or by hitting his step back or sidestep jump shot. Now we got the hometown kid, Kennedy Chandler, next. I am hoping the, – the one good thing about them drafting Kennedy Chandler is the Grizzlies had a lack of players who can, you know, create off the dribbles. I mean, straight off the dribble. A player that can get into the lane at will. The only one that they really had was John Morant. Tyus Jones can get there sometimes, but he's not really built like that. But Kennedy Chandler has the quickness to be able to get in the lane at will, and getting in the lane at will – is the primary recipe for breaking down defenses. And it would be good to see him still be able to have that ability in the summer league to be able to stay in the lane when he wants and to be able to finish and create shots for himself and his teammates while in the lane. Also, I would like him to be able to get his three-point shot off uh, effectively in summer league. And shows some semblance of having his defense transfer over even against bigger ball handlers in the summer league. Now, the guy that's probably going to be the main attraction for most Grizzly fans, the guy that everybody's going to want to see is Mr. Kenny Lofton Jr. Now, this guy was a star in college, he was a star on Team USA with a team with Chet Holmgren, Jay Ivey, and other first round picks on it. He went up against the presumptive number one pick in the 2023 draft uh, uh, last summer for Team USA in Victor Wimbayama and promptly played very well against him. Now, he is, he has been overweight. He is, you can tell he's already fastly losing weight. If you can look, I might put his, one of his older pictures up right here so you can see the difference in how he looks from then to now. But he is a very, very talented player. He's probably the most talented player of this group. No cap. He is that good. He basically is another Zach Randolph. Crazy interior score, good skill level. He can shoot, actually. He does have some ball skills, and he's a very good rebounder. The question is, does he have the athleticism and size and craft to hold up in the NBA? If he was 6'10", he would have probably went top five, but he's 6'7". So, hence, he went undrafted. That's how much size means in the NBA. This guy would be a freaking, he would be talked about like uh, Paolo Banchero Banchero if he was 6'10", 6'11". He is that skilled. So we're going to see if it translates, and I expect him to be able to mash folks in the summer league because he's talented, and I hope he really looks like a player that can somehow get his stuff together in the NBA as he gets in better and better condition over this next season or two. 
and finds himself an NBA career. If not, he's going to have a long career in basketball either here in the minor leagues or overseas in Europe. So we'll see. He's going to be one of the most fun players to watch. Now, one of the other curious returnees from last year, uh, Santi Aldama. We're going to be watching for him to actually look like a functional basketball player. To actually be able to make shots uh, as far as jump shots, that was his downfall. I don't know where his jump shot went this past year. Um, it seemed like he, when he came over for last summer league, he was fresh off an airplane coming from Spain and he never really recovered. And I don't think his confidence recovered the whole season. So hopefully he was able to take a couple of months off in the summer or a month off in the summer, get himself together, get his head space right and get his jump shot together. I want to see Santi Aldama make shots. That is basically the only thing that I want to see. The rest of his game is really okay. His defense isn't terrible. Uh, he rebounds. He can. He challenges shots. You know, I mean, it's for as far as you expect from a number 30 pick. I don't expect Santi Aldama to be a superstar. I just want to look, him to look like a functional rotation player in the future. That's it. Now, Xavier Tillman, uh, it's kind of troubling that he's in summer league this year. A guy that has started playoff games that's going into his third season, and you're still playing summer league. Hopefully, it's just to keep himself in shape because I think that was a big problem last year. He came into the season a little bit out of shape, and hopefully this year he's He's dedicating himself to being in primo prime condition. And I'm looking for him to really be an effective player in this summer league. He should look fantastic in the summer league. Should look like one of the better players on the court all the time. I don't care who he's going up against. And I hope to see it because I think he's basically playing for his NBA basketball life right now. And I want to see Xavier Tillman make it because I think he's a very talented player. Now, on the fringes, we have Romeo Weems, a guy I like coming out of college. Uh, played for the Hustle last year, really like him. We have Shaq Buchanan, another guy that's been with the Hustle for a couple years. And he is, you know, I think Josh's former teammate. So we're looking for him to improve. I don't know what his NBA prospects are in the future. Tremont Waters, who really, this is another guy, sort of like Kenny Lofter Jr. If he was six foot two, he would probably be starting and running an NBA team right now. But he's five foot ten, so that size is just such a hard thing to overcome in today's game. Where most players, where we're getting to a place in the NBA that the size of the requirement size of players is steadily creeping up. Now, back in the day, you used to have a lot of six-foot, under six-foot players. Now, you barely have anybody who can make it at under six feet. You barely have people that can make it at six feet, six one. You have to be so freaking skilled to make it at six feet, six one. We had a draft where I don't think but one player under six four was drafted in the first round last year this in 2022. So the NBA is creeping up. Everybody keeps talking about the NBA being a small ball league, but no, the NBA is being, is getting a highly skilled league. And as the player levels, as the player skill level increases, you're having more guys, six foot four, six foot five, that have these point guard skills six foot eight guys with point guard skills that are running the point and making it impossible for guys that are six feet, six one to stay on the court. So that's my little rant about that. And what I'm going to, what you're going to see though is Trayvon Waters is very, very talented. One of, probably one of the better point guards that you'll see in the summer league. And then we have EJ Uno who um, played for the Memphis hustle 
He is basically a um, 3 and D guy, shoots threes, block shots at the rims, a big guy. Um, he just doesn't move the right – like an NBA player for me. That's, even when he was coming out of college, that was one of my big things for him. Probably why he went undrafted. He's just – a guy that's trying to grind it out to get to where he can be a backup center in the league. And I'm hoping for his sake that he gets to do that. He's one of those guys that's trying to be, try to get to where Xavier Tillman is right now. He's never going to be a guy that's probably going to be able to start, but if he's a guy that can block shots effectively, you know, play some defense and hit some threes, he might find him a place in a couple of seasons in the NBA as a backup five. So that's it for the summer league roster as far as the relevant guys are concerned. Let me know who are you looking forward to seeing in the summer league? What are your expectations for these guys in the summer league? I want to know. Put it in the comments. Let's talk about it. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell for notifications. And like this video and share it with other people who are going to be watching the summer league with you. Until next time, happy 4th of July, people.